Don't hang up that phone. We have found what you are looking for. Welcome to the five minutes with an RCDD podcast. Well, seems how we're pulling category 6A, the most powerful twisted pair there is in the world. You gotta ask yourself this one question. Did I pull 295 feet or 300? Well, do you feel lucky? Do you, punk? In this podcast, you will learn the differences between a 66 and a 110 punch tool, the proper way to install and support cable, along with terminating and testing parameters. What exactly does RCDD stand for? Really can't do diddly? Or some guy that's just sitting around in a chair making podcasts? So join us as we talk about the world of telecommunications from ISP to OSP, copper to fiber, design to installation. Now send the new guy to the truck for a bucket of dial tone and the cable stretchers while you listen to an informative program on the ever-changing industry of telecommunications. Now here's your host, Chuck Bowser, RCDD. Welcome to 5 Minutes with an RCDD, where we talk about cable. Hi, I'm your host, Chuck Bowser, RCDD. This is the introductory episode of a series where we talk about cable, voice cabling, data cabling, camera cabling, AV cabling. We answer all your questions. But the first episode, we really got to talk about who I am. And this is the only time you're going to hear me do this because I am not one of those look at me kind of people. But you do have to understand my experience and my background as we move forward through these shows. So as I mentioned, my name is Chuck Bowser. I am a Bixie certified technician, an RCDD, a former Bixie trainer. I have 38 years of cable design, installation, testing, and troubleshooting. It's the only job I've ever done. Sure, I've had side gigs along the way, but my primary 40 hour a week, you know, Monday through Friday job was always cabling. I've done projects from as small as a single cable to a project as large as thousands of cables across multiple buildings. I've had many positions over the years. I've been doing this for 38 years. I've had positions everybody starts off with, apprentice, where you're a newbie. You don't know anything. You come in dumb and hopefully somebody will take you under their wing and and train you. Luckily, I did have those mentor and role models in my life. So I started off as an apprentice, quickly came up to become a cable installation technician, and then a technician, and then project manager. I've also been an estimator, an area manager, a QA inspector, and now I'm a trainer. Of all those positions, I think the favorite one is training because I feel like I'm giving back to the community that has provided me and my family for so much for so long. It's a way of giving back. It's a way of mentoring. I love mentoring people. One of the things I've learned through training is it helps reinforce the knowledge within you. It helps you become a better person. And what's wrong with helping people, right? That's one of the things I love to do. I love to mentor people. So let's talk about some of my certifications and some of my experience, just to kind of lay the foundation from where the advice I'm going to be giving to you on this podcast comes from. I've had many manufacturer certificates. If I had to think of every one I've ever had, I could probably fill up four or five pages of eight and a half by 11 stationary with my certification list, but I've had them all. I am a certified Bixie technician, which you have to go, have to have at least five years of experience and then take the test to get that. I am an RCDD, which is a registered communications distribution designer. And also I'm a, I was a certified Bixie trainer for one of the companies that I work for. Let's talk about what you can expect from this podcast. First, let's talk about the length. As you gather from the title, five minutes with an RCDD, they're going to be short. Do I expect them to be five minutes? No. They'll probably be closer to 10 or 15 minutes. And who knows? I'll let let the subject matter 
dictate the length, not necessarily me watching a clock. The five minutes, just to kind of imply to you that I value your time. And I want to give you the most that you can get for the least amount of time that you can invest. For as far as frequency, I'm looking to put, to produce these about once a week. Maybe more, maybe less. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but at least once a week. Another thing that you're going to get out of this is background to the industry. A lot of people come in to the industry now and think that we've done Cat 5e cabling and that's all it's ever been. But you have to understand where we came from and where we are now to understand all of the idiosyncrasies of this industry. We're also going to discuss trends in the future because we are tied to the hip to the computer industry dragging us into the future. It's always changing. I mean, for example, one of the new trends or newer trends is power over Ethernet over four pair cabling, which is quickly blurring the line between what we as low voltage installers do compared to us high voltage installers. You know, the term low voltage and high voltage installers is it's one of those things where if you ask five people what that means to them, you're going to get six different answers. Generally, though, it's thought that low-voltage installers are people who install cabling that are going to handle 600 volts or less. But you won't find that documented anywhere. Even in the code book, the term low-voltage only shows up once. And where it shows up, it's talking about a piece of equipment, not an installer. So generally, low-voltage installers are the guys who are installing the voice cabling, the data cabling, the AV cabling. Sure, electricians, which are normally described as high voltage installers, can't install those, but a low voltage installer can't install high voltage unless they have gone through the journeyman process to become a certified and licensed electrician. Now that doesn't mean electric just because electricians have gone through the actual certification that they know low voltage. And just because somebody starts off as a low voltage installer and goes around and becomes an electrician is a good electrician. You have to judge everybody based on their merit. We're also going to have discussions on relevant topics for the industry. I just kind of touched on one, low voltage versus high voltage and how quickly that line is getting blurred. I'm also going to, from time to time going to interview industry experts. While I hate that term expert, I get called that quite often. I get called a subject matter expert or SME. I am a constant learner. I'd, I'd rather be called a constant learner than an expert because there's nobody in this industry who knows everything about this industry. I know a lot about our industry, but I don't know everything. But I also realize where, what I don't know. You know. Knowledge is one of those weird things, right? When you don't have it, you're blissful. When you start to get a little bit of it, you get arrogant, you get cocky. When you start getting a lot of knowledge, you realize how much you don't know. And it, hopefully that creates a thirst within you to get more knowledge. Hopefully that's why you're here, right? To get, that more, to get more knowledge. And then also I expect to be doing shows from your questions. Obviously, I don't expect any questions on the first episode because you don't even know I'm here yet. But if you have a question about anything cable related, email it to us and we'll get you the information. And maybe if, if it's enough content, we'll make a podcast over it. Going back to my certifications, though, I touched on based on that I am a Bixie certified technician, which you have to have at least five years experience for. And I've had my Bixie technician certificate for years. But you also have to attend the class and also take the very rough written test and a hands-on test. I also mentioned RCDD, a Registered Communications Distribution Designer. Now you can become an RCDD and never done anything in the field. You can't become a technician and not done anything in the field. So you'll find two different kinds of RCDDs, those who came from the field and those who have no field experience. I am one of those who has field experience. I'm not going to tell you if I think one is better than the other. I think each has their strengths and drawbacks. Maybe that's a t topic of a future show. But for me, I have experience in both field installation and design installation. So an RCD certificate is a certificate that people get from an organization called BICSI. B-I-C-S-I. It stands for Building Industry Consulting Services International. According to their website, and this is verbatim off their website, it says, Bixie is a professional association supporting the advancement of the information and communications technology profession and currently serves more than 26,000 members and all credential holders. 
Bixi is a preeminent source of the connected world, headquartered in Tampa, Florida, and the membership spans nearly 100 countries. Bixi's vision statement is that Bixi will be the preeminent resource for the connected world. What do they actually do, though? They started off as an educational and training source. Because right after divestiture, a lot of people jumped in the information communication technologies, the structured cable world, the information transport system world. They all mean the same thing. They just change the name over the time. Had no experience in this field. So they came up with the, 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 the training programs like the Bixie Technician and the Installer and the Copper Technician. They just changed a couple times. They also came up with the RCDD for design certifications. They also have a bunch of others as well. They hold yearly conferences and events. They typically do two, three, or four events. The big one is always the one in February, the winter conference held in usually Orlando, sometimes Tampa. And at those events, you learn about all the newest technologies coming out, all the latest vendors, including my company, the company I work for, goes there to display their new stuff. They create the credential certifications and manage those and make sure that people get their continuing education credit. So you don't just get that certificate and you're done. You have to show that you get a certain amount of years experience, a certain amount of hours of experience every year to be able to maintain that certification. They also write standards and, and best practices. I just recently got their newest books, their pocket guides, the installation pocket guides, and I'm currently going through those now. Great resource. Great resource, especially if you're new to the industry. It's a set of three books that fit in your pocket, hence the term pocket guide. And if you buy all three of them, you're for only $45. But you got knowledge. You've got knowledge. It's funny, we as low voltage technicians, we as installers or designers or technicians, we're great at going out and purchasing the latest, greatest tools, especially if they have chrome on them. And then quite often, would leave them somewhere, usually in a ceiling, and they'd have to go replace that tool. That's the beautiful thing about knowledge. Once you've got it, you don't have to replace it. Another thing that it does is it creates a, a community and membership. So you find when you go to these these Bixie shows and you start seeing the same people over and over again, you know that those people go there, they're committed to this industry. Now let's talk about what is an ICT, an Information Communication Technologies, right? That's the voice cabling, the data cabling, the audio and video technologies. It could be uh, electronic safety and security. It could be installing those. It could be designing those. It could be certifying those. It could also be safety related to that, like your, your ladder safety and your job site safety. They also do project management. You know, that's one of the, that's another weak area in our industry because we as an industry tend to usually just promote from within and we usually promote who's the best project foreman, not necessarily a good project manager because those are different skill sets. Yes, a foreman can be a great project manager, but not necessarily. It's not guaranteed unless you give them some kind of training, some kind of mentorship. So ICT is also going to be design, integrating, installing those telecommunications distribution so they last forever, for as long as you need them. And that so they are interoperable. But it's not just cabling. We also have wireless. You know, you're probably thinking, well, Chuck, that, you know, why are you having a podcast about cabling? Cabling is going away. No, it's not. Those wireless access points that are placed in the ceiling so people can connect wirelessly are connected via wire back to a computer somewhere. So it's still going to be cabling. And wireless is even more dependent on the cable that's connecting to that WAP or that wireless access device. It also might be data center design and also outside plant cabling. All of these are subjects that are going to be within the ICT world. So what is an RCDD? Right? It's just cable, right? Yeah, right. No, it's more than just cabling. I remember when I was a young technician and I learned that you know, we put Tip back then, video was done over coax, and telephone was done over twisted pair cabling, usually what was called POTS cabling, P-O-T-S, plain old telephone service cabling. And I remember thinking, why can't I put this video across that four-pair cable? So I took a piece of coax cable, and I strapped a couple pieces of copper to it, and, and then I put it on there. It didn't work, because back then I knew nothing about cabling. But I still tried it. So it's not just cabling. You have to choose the right cable for what it is that you're trying to do. Is it a voice system, a data system, a video system? Those are all 
going to be your success will be hinged on the type of cable and the quality of cable that you choose for that. That is why you need an RCDD. Because an RCDD has documented experience and has passed a very tough test. Does that mean that an RCDD is going to be good just because they've passed that test? No. Does that mean that somebody who doesn't have an RCDD isn't going to be as knowledgeable as or even more so than somebody who has an RCDD? No. But what that does tell you is that person has taken the time, invested in their career to get documented, and now they have to keep it current. They have to get those continuing education credits. Those, go back to the ICT. That RCD is going to know whether to use copper cable or fiber cable or twisted pair or coax, whether to use round cable or flat cable, inside plant or outside plant cable. Because if you put an inside plant cable in a condo outside, it may quit working after a while. It probably will quit working after a while. And that's where your RCD comes into play, right? Because like I said, they can, they can design a detailed cabling system for whether it's a brand spanking new building or a retrofit. They can make your design fit to work with the system that you are going to be having to use. The RCD can follow the project the whole way through. So the RCD doesn't just design, they might be also be a project manager. Right? They're going to follow all the way through to make sure that the intent of that cable plant is installed the way that it was supposed to be. The RCD is still around even at the end of the project. They're going to be, might be the ones signing off, or they might be the QA inspector. The RCD is a certification that's recognized around the world as an authority. And, and you'll see a lot of times in, with customers putting out documents for what's called an RFP or RFQ. Request for proposal, request for quote. Documents that customers will send out to solicit installation services of ICT companies. Right? And a lot of times, those documents will say that there has to be an RCDD or, a, or an X number of RCDDs. Again, to help ensure that the cable plant gets installed the way that they want it to be done. So that's why an RCDD is important to you. Especially if you've got a brand new cable plant going in. Because you're going to want it to work. Nothing is more frustrating than to hop, hop on the internet on a computer network and then it not work or it works slow. Then RCDD can help you with that. So next episode, I'm going to talk about neat and workmanlike manner. What is it? What is it as per the NEC? What is it? How is it different between somebody who's only got six months experience or somebody who is a QA inspector? So until the next episode, keep cabling on.